Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, taking a first thoughts... I should have called it first look. I don't know why I called it first thoughts. Anyway, I'm gonna be playing Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. Um, I haven't played the original version of this game. I think it was on the GameCube? I'm not sure. Uh, I did, I think, play a little bit of a Mon Super Monkey Ball game on the DS, which wasn't great. Um, DS doesn't have an analog stick, I think that might have been part of the problem. Um, that's the only one I played, I think, and I didn't play much of it. Apparently this one's pretty good, though, so let's see how we go. Um, let's, uh, launch that up. I'm using, uh, detached Joy-Cons right now as a pair because I have a feeling this game might have motion controls based on what I remember about the DS one and the sort of game it was. It might. Uh, it might not. We'll see. Supports the autosave feature. Well, it is 2019, so that makes sense. Um... Uh, okay. <laughs> Press any button. I pressed A. That's a button. What do we got? We've got main game. We've got party games, which are multiplayer. If, if you want them to be. It looks like this is one player. This can be played with friends, so yeah. Online ranking, time attack, decathlon, options. Let's look at the options first. Uh, you can change vibration, you can change camera sensitivity. I assume that's like when you tilt the stick to move the camera around, how fast it goes, that kind of thing. Change the brightness, uh, voice, volume. Nothing too fancy in there. Um, I guess let's go, go main game and have a look. Okay, we can pick characters. Uh, move the cursor with the left stick. You can also use the D-pad, which is what I've been using, but the left stick works fine too, so... Is that random? Or is that like a character I haven't unlocked yet? It's a character I haven't unlocked yet, alright. Okay, so we got a I I, Mimi, Baby. That's a baby, alright, yep. Uh, Gon Gon, Yan Yan, and Doctor. I don't really know any of these characters. Um, I guess I'll go with the, like guy on the cover, which is this one, Ai. And we'll see how we go. Uh, looks like there's multiple worlds. You can probably unlock them as you play and not have to do everything over again, so that's cool. Um, we'll go to Monkey Island, I suppose. We seem to have limited lives. You can see the little monkey head up there in the corner saying three. Um, which is a little frustrating. <laughs> I, I think, you know, it's 2019. It's a bit silly to have limited lives at this point. Okay, so we've got Golden Bananas, so we're playing DK64 now. Um, and they're being stolen by something. By a, a evil monkey, I think. The camera angles are weird. Oh, I see, it's a pirate monkey with scissor hands. Isn't that a movie? Okay. Um, there goes the pirate ship. This 3D looks a little less than HD. I feel like this is probably how it looked on the GameCube. I'm not sure they've enhanced it too much. Okay, let's see. We've got uh, move the ball with the left stick, jump with the A button, and pause with... Yeah, that makes sense. Um, stage one? Yeah, let's go. Uh, there goes a little monkey. So I'm gonna be moving a ball. I, I assume that's the monkey ball from the title. Ready? Go! Yeah, this looks familiar. Okay. Go! So yeah, um, that's pretty much what I expected having played the DS game. Yeah, you just gotta roll the ball down the path, get all the bananas you can, and make it to the gate as fast as possible. I don't seem to be able to move the camera, so I'm not sure why I would need camera controls. Maybe I unlock the ability to do that later or something? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um... Like, I have to jump to do this one, because the, um... There we go. <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> Cute. Ready? Go! Go! 
やっほーボーナスステージ I think in this one you just stay here for 60 seconds and get all the bananas like there's not an exit I'm not sure if you can lose lives in these stages. Hopefully not. Huh. I guess the game doesn't have motion control either, which is interesting. I thought it would. But apparently it doesn't, so that's interesting. Onward. Okay. Um, this is looking a little scarier. Yahoo! <laughs> Ready? Go! Woohoo! Oops. <laughs> Yaho! I don't know what a champion medal is or does, but I guess we'll find out when I get it or I don't get it. <laughs> Go. Oh, this is a weird game. I wonder how long each world is. Like, it says stage 8 there. I don't know how many there are. Also interesting, it didn't have an option for units. Like, it says kilometers per hour down there, which I'm fine with, but I imagine it uses miles in some regions, and there doesn't seem to be a way to change that. Um, which is a bit strange, in my opinion. Um... Like, generally when a game uses, you know, units of measurement, it has like an imperial or metric option in the options that you can change, but it looks like this one doesn't. Which strikes me as a bit strange. Is this like a boss battle or something? Yeah, it looks like a boss battle. It's got a flashing weak point. Hi, bird. Warning. Ready? Okay, so I've got to beat it in 120 seconds, I assume. How do I do this? I want to get behind him? Okay, no, I meant to just stay in the front and jump on him when he, like, beaks down or whatever. Or they. I don't know the birds. Oh, nope. Oh, I think I got it? Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so I need to basically stay still. And then just jump up when the bird beaks down. Okay, this is a bit weird. <laughs> I think from the nature of the game, the bosses should really be like races rather than actual combat, but... Same thing with Sonic, really, which I also think is a bit weirdly designed. Anyway, boss defeated. I got a golden banana, yay! Oh, banana. <laughs> World clear. Ba -da -ba -da -ba yeah! <laughs> uh, I got a, I got a clear medal for World 1, okay. Did I get the mastery medal? I did! Got the champion medal from World 1. Is that from not dying or... I don't know. I guess I'll hit next and see what happens. Also, yeah, it doesn't seem to use mo motion control at all, so these attached Joy-Cons aren't really doing a whole lot. It is kind of comfy being able to put your hands further apart and still play, though. 
So it's kind of nice that you can do this with most Switch games if you want to. Some you can't do it with, like ARMS for example, which is obnoxious. In, in ARMS it detects whether the controllers are at the same orientation, and if they're not, it assumes you're playing in the motion control mode. So you actually have to use the um, like plastic grip thing to put the Joy-Cons in if you want to play in button mode, which is absolutely ridiculous. It should just be a toggle you actually set, like in most games that have different control schemes. Um, I feel like maybe I went the wrong way. <laughs> uh, what's happening here? Okay, so let's go back and go the other way. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not very good at this game, but, you know, I'm having some fun. I think these spikes don't actually hurt, even though they look like they might. Oh no! I got a Fallout! New Vegas! Oh no! I mean, I love Fallout New Vegas, but... We weren't trying to play it, we are trying to play this other game. Which is Donkey Kong 64, but inside a ball. Hamster ball sort of thing. I wonder why they chose monkeys instead of hamsters, considering this is basically a hamster ball. And that's like a well-known thing that people have in real life. Oh my god! <laughs> the physics for moving around as the, the monkey ball are a little weird. Um, like, you're not actually moving the ball, right? You're tilting the ground, and the ball just moves in accordance. So, you don't have a whole lot of air control, because obviously you don't. If you think about the way you're controlling the ball, which is you're not. <laughs> Um, so when you jump, you sort of give up your control a bit, and it's it's not great. There we go. I wonder if this version's as hard to, um... ...cheat when you're speedrunning as the original version of the game. I feel like no, because the live counter and stuff disappear on the screen. Whereas in the original version, they stick around. Uh, although maybe it's still... hmm, I'm not sure. Um, what I mean is it's impossible to splice together clips of play in the, in the original version of the game because uh, there's so much stuff on the screen that, like, clues people in that that's what you've done. Uh, I feel like this version doesn't have that as much, but maybe it does. Uh... Ready? Yaho, yaho, yaho! You can see it's just getting harder and harder as we progress through the game. Bonus stage! Okay, we want to get all the bananas in this level. Interesting the bananas are all yellow, instead of having differently coloured bananas like in Donkey Kong 64, which I keep referencing because I'm a dork like that. I suppose these are the kind of bananas you want to actually eat. You don't really want to eat purple ones. That game was weird. I, I liked it, but it was weird. And I get why a lot of people didn't. <laughs> Yahoo! I wonder if I'm supposed to play through the whole game in one sitting, or if you can do it a world at a time. Since it made me go directly to the next world, I feel like you might be supposed to do it all in one sitting, but I'm not sure. Oh, that looks really scary. Let's go for it. Oh! Well, I got a bunch of bananas, so the overall lives are okay. Uh, okay, you can speed up the spin at the beginning there by holding the A button. I don't know if that's worth doing, but it's a thing you can do. Okay, let's go this way. Uh, okay, you can't jump over it once it's pushing you because the way the, way the momentum works. Um, because you aren't actually getting momentum downwards because it's pushing you up. And when you're in midair, you can't get momentum because the game works by having you tilt the ground instead of actually move the ball. Clever. 
Oh, there's holes. Oh no. Oh, oh dear, that's not good. Oh my goodness, this is scary. Oh gosh. I do wish you could turn the camera, but I get why you can't. Like, it, it does make sense. Yay! Yahoo! I'm guessing if you... Oh no, I did fall out a couple of times and I still got the champion medal, so I'm not sure what it is that decides if you get it. I think there's a button you can press to say how do medals work or something on the select screen, so I might press that once we're through this world. Whoa! Fall out New Vegas. Already made that joke. But yeah, there aren't really... It's not like with Elder Scrolls, where there's a whole bunch of different named games. The Fallout games are just called 1, 2, 3, and 4. Also tactics, I guess. So I could make a tactics joke. But, like, just, just saying, like, Fallout 4 or whatever isn't as funny. Because it's not, like, a long phrase that sounds silly. This is scary. Yeah, the camera's a little disorienting in this game. Like, the camera's not actually moving that much, it's because the ground is tilting so much, it looks like the camera's all going all over the place, but... Yeah, same deal. <laughs> oh no! Oh! Oh, go all the way to the end! Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm ready, let's go. I'm not sure if the monkey getting, like, tripped up actually affects the gameplay. If you start rolling fast enough, the monkey, like, rolls inside the ball instead of walking. I'm not sure if that's bad, or if that just doesn't affect anything. Since you're tilting the ground rather than making the monkey move in a certain way, I feel like probably that happening has no impact, but I'm not sure. Yahoo! It's very Japanese. <laughs> Ready? Go. Like in the sense of the language, not like culture or whatever. I don't know. Um, I'm yeah, whatever. By the way, it's weird that we call the language Japanese instead of Nihongo. Like they sound completely different. weird that most languages from, you know, non-European cultures we call... Actually, most languages from European cultures, most languages, we have, like, English names for all the languages, even though they have their own names. It's really weird. Like, it's not Spanish, it's Espanol, for example. And Nihongo, and what whatever Mandarin is called. Is it actually called Mandarin? I don't know. Not an expert on that. Uh, whoa, whoa, oh no. <laughs> well, that tactics. The bananas respawn, or doesn't look like it. Okay, makes sense because then you could like grind for extra lives by grabbing enough bananas and then killing yourself and doing it again. In some levels where there's lots of bananas, like if you get you know two ups and getting a whole bunch of bananas, then you could go ahead and grab and go ahead and die after that to respawn all the bananas, and then you get more lives. Anyway. Uh. Actually, yeah, like, German and French and whatever have different names for themselves as well. I don't know why we have English names for all the languages like that, it's very weird. Probably something to do with English imperialism, TBH. Gross. Anyway, um... So yeah, I'm not sure why this game has lives, given it was, like, just released. I guess they wanted to preserve how the original worked, but... I mean, it's 2019, lives just aren't really a thing in games anymore. At least, you know, modern games. The Spyro and Crash remakes still have lives and I don't understand why. Especially the Spyro remake, given the lives don't really do anything. Mm. Crash remake, I kind of get it, because it's a game that, you know, it's really sort of twitchy and you die very easily, and you do have to redo a whole level if you mess up, that kind of thing. Spyro, though, it saves your progress automatically, like in you know, Odyssey, so it's, it's just silly. Um, what is happening here? Okay, there, no. This is silly. There we go. 
I guess this is sort of an arcadey game. It's keeping an overall score and stuff like that. So, like, having limited lives sort of makes sense from that perspective. Okay, what do we got here? Um, uh, uh, arm cannon monkey. Oh my god, I just remembered Ape Escape. Did anyone else play Ape Escape? I, I loved that game. I hope they make, like, a, a, a modern remake or whatever of that, because that game was great. Um, I'm, I'm meant to go along the bridge or whatever, or do I just hang out with you and... Oh no! Oh no, it's New Vegas. Um, okay, no, the bridge is just picking extra bananas. I think I just have to hang out down here and jump on the boss's weapons carefully. Not like that. This is gonna be tricky. Got it. That's what you get for putting a giant button on your missiles that makes them go back to you. Duh. <laughs> Silly VR monkey. Or ape, or I don't know. You. You gonna like shoot me or what? Um, we don't have much time here before the timer runs out, so you might want to shoot at me more often. Bump. Bump. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, seriously? Do I have to restart the whole boss now? Yes. <sighs> yeah, these, these bosses, I don't think they're great. I think the actual levels are better, and I think the bosses should be like more of a race kind of thing. Where you have to beat the boss to the ending rather than actually a fight, because I don't think this works very well. There we go. I mean, I know the normal levels you have to redo if you fall out as well, but here it's just like, you mess up. Uh, I mean, I guess it's very similar if you think about it, but these take longer, is the main problem. Because you've got to wait for the boss to attack. Which is antithetical to a game like this, which is about going as quick as possible. Even more so than Sonic, for example. Which, like I mentioned, has similar sorts of problems. I wonder if it would be better if I had like a health bar rather than just the missile can knock you off the edge if you mess up. Maybe? Oop. Oh. oh my goodness. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. It's weird that you have to press A to jump when all the other face buttons do nothing. I would have made them all jump, just, you know, so you can pick which button you want to use. Actually, the shoulder buttons do nothing too, and the right stick does nothing, and the D-pad does nothing. The only thing that is just A and left stick. So I guess this could be comfortably played with one Joy-Con if you wanted, but... Uh, it's still weird that they're not using any of the other buttons for anything. I mean, I understand not using the D-pad because, you know, if you need analog control for this kind of game, but... Apart from that, it's weird. Clunk. Mm, I agree. Oh, what? Come on, we both got hit. <sighs> Ready? Yeah, I don't think the bosses in this game work very well. Actual levels are a lot more fun. It's nothing compared to, say, Odyssey bosses, which are fantastic. Which is a shame. Oops. Missile, missile, missile. 
Oh, by the way, this game came with stickers, which is really interesting. Like, most Switch games come with absolutely nothing in the box, which is why there's not much incentive to get the box instead of the, um, the, um, you know, the downloaded version. Um, but this one came with this little pack of stickers, which is kind of cool. Um, pretty unusual. And pretty cool of them, in my opinion, to, to have that extra feely there. Like in the olden days of, you know, Infocom games and stuff like that. And Zork, that kind of stuff. Was that Infocom? I don't remember. Yeah, that was that was Infocom, yeah. And they had, like, Invisi clues and all that, where they had the hint book with the hints that don't actually tell you things about the game. Like, just to mislead you if you happen to look at the hint book and see questions that don't make sense. So they had a bunch of questions that just don't match up with what's in the game to try to avoid spoilers. I thought that was pretty cool. And funny. And there's like the modern Invisi Clues thing where basically you click a link and it reveals the... Ah. Uh, just have a lot of lives to work with, but this is annoying and not much fun. And I don't think going on the bridge over there would really speed anything up, which is why I'm not bothering to do it. on me. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, half down, half down. He's gonna do the, like, mini bullets thingy now. Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> New Vegas. really quite annoying. Um, I am not a fan of this part of the game. <laughs> ah! Transmisogyny right there. Ready? Sure, whatever. I assume I just lose when the timer at the top runs out there that has the bomb on it. Did I not hit that? Oh god. This is so annoying. Not fun. <laughs> there we go. One. I think I need like maybe five hits? I'm not sure. Maybe six. That's two. Yeah, I think three is half, so it'd be six. Okay, now he's gonna do the thing with lots of them. Woohoo! That happened. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! Oh. Wasteland. <laughs> I was saving that for the next time I died. Cause, cause, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these bosses aren't great. Um, a, a lot of games don't have great bosses, but these are really, really not good. Uh, I'd say these are probably worse than the ones in Spyro. Um, even though that's a completely different style of game to this. Although, I don't know, I guess these aren't really racial stereotypes, because they're just, like... Because everyone's, like, a monkey of some kind, or a bird, or... I don't know. I, I guess it's better in that sense, because Spyro had some racial stereotype characters that you had to fight. 
And I have no idea why I didn't just change those in the remake. They should have done. Oh, da, 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 da. oh. No, no, no. Oh. This is so annoying. Oh my god. I wonder if that lets you skip stuff if you keep messing it up, like a lot of modern games. I'm guessing no, because of the lives. It probably just makes you do everything again if you mess it up. Like it probably did in the original. Hmm. I feel like if you're going to do a modern remake of an old game, you should probably tweak the gameplay a bit so it's better. Like Spyro did, it's got that treasure tracker thing Sparks can do, and it's got a map. Still got some some stuff that's dated, like the you know the lives and all that. But it's also got fast travel, and as far as I can tell, this has the exact same gameplay as the original probably did. Like I'm not super familiar with the original, but I think this is how it worked, and I don't think they've really changed anything. I mean, it doesn't have motion controls. Like the GameCube version wouldn't have had motion controls because the GameCube controller didn't do that. So, like as an option, like obviously it would be annoying in some cases, but. Not to have a motion control option on a Switch version of this game is very weird, considering how this game works. Like, you're, you're tilting the whole game world, like, the ability to do that by tilting the controller would make a lot of sense. Granted, it would probably be more annoying to play than just using the left stick, but it's very weird that it's not an option. Um, if it were mandatory, then the game would suck, but if it were an option, that would be cool. And I would probably enjoy it for like five minutes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm not enjoying this boss. It's been, I don't know, like 10 minutes or something of just this boss. Uh, after I've managed to beat this, this uh, VR ape or whatever, I'm probably going to go and look at the other modes rather than continuing with the single player, just so we get a bit of a perspective on what else this game can do. Okay, now he's doing this thing. God, I survived. Oh, he has it again. Okay. Oh, thank goodness. Oh. Okay, so that was terrible. Um, but at least I get a golden banana. Oh, banana. <laughs> Yep, we've got two golden bananas. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -dum -ba. Yeah! Clear! I wonder if I got the super clear or whatever. I did! Okay. So all that failing didn't affect that, apparently. World 3's been unlocked. I'll go stage select now and just have a quick look. Okay, so... Yeah, I can pick any of the stages. Okay, it shows little bananas on some of them? I don't know what that means. Well, I can't pick the bonus stage just like that, so that makes sense. Uh, how to obtain medals? Let's see. Obtain this medal by clearing all stages of a world for the first time. Obtain this medal by clearing all stages of a world in order and without using a continue. Oh, okay, so when you run out of lives, you get continues. Hmm. That's still not ideal game design, but because of the sort of arcadey focus this has, it kind of makes sense, I guess. Let's have a look at the other modes. Uh, okay, so we've got this party games option. It says there's ten types of party games. Do I need multiple players to do this, or will it work with just one? It will work with just one. Cool. Okay, we've got Seesaw Ball, Space Monkey Attack, Slingshot, Dangerous Route, Hurdle Race, Hammer Throw, Hovercraft Race. I don't know if these were in the original, so I don't know if this is like a new feature or something. Uh, or if they've just brought back the same stuff. So let's go into one player and have a quick look. Same controls as normal, but you're tilting a seesaw apparently. I'll make it easy. <sighs> Alright, so... 
All right, so I assume I'm going to have, have a monkey ball ball and... Yeah, okay, so it's very similar. Okay, you only tilt the seesaw that you're on by the looks of things, which is interesting. I thought I'd tilt all of them. Okay, now it's like the one you're closest to. Interesting. So here, I think motion control would really fit, because, you know, you're literally tilting these objects around. Having the option to use motion control would make sense. Again, not mandatory, but it'd be a useful thing to be able to say, I would like to play this by tilting my Joy-Con, because it gives you a bit more uh, analog precision for some of these controls, in my opinion. Like, for things like aiming guns and stuff in games like Splatoon, it works really well. So, I think it would work out here too. Obviously not mandatory, like it is in um, various games that it shouldn't be mandatory in, like Breath of the Wild, for example. I don't know why it's like that. Okay, so yeah, this is just, it's kind of like pinball actually, which is interesting. You gotta sort of carefully manipulate the flippers or whatever. So that they launch you where you want to go. It's a, it's a fitting minigame considering how the main game works. Uh... I assume I wanted to hit the little pink spot in the middle to get the best points, but it's okay too. I'm guessing it's like split screen or something if you actually play multiplayer. Kind of reminds me a bit of Mario Party sort of minigames. Oh, hang on, barrel roll. That sounds like fun. Let's do this. Let's do a barrel roll. Okay, Ready? so this is the, Go. whatever it was, space monkey attack or something? Okay, so I can... Okay, so it's basically, um, Galaga? Sort of? Um, but, like, a huge mess? And the controls are weird? Yeah, this is kind of like a weird Galaga clone. It doesn't work very well, in my opinion. And it doesn't fit quite as well with the, like, main game like the first one did, because this is completely different. In, like, gameplay and everything. Hmm. Okay, there's a big ship up there. Oh, I'm dead. Um, I guess I'll just play this until I run out of ships. Which is gonna happen very fast, because I'm not very good at it. And yeah, I don't think this is nearly as good as the first one, in terms of being a, like, super monkey ball themed party game. Like, I can see my monkey down there is in a little ball or whatever on the spaceship, but it's it's not the same sort of gameplay. Even, like, the controls are different, obviously, but also it's it's not physics-oriented, puzzle-y sort of speed, whatever, the same way that Seesaw Ball was. Let's look at Slingshot. Let's see what it does. Um, Decide direction with the left stick, pull the ball back and launch with A, pause menu is plus or minus. Alright. There's a weird paucity of controls in this game. <laughs> okay, um... Oh, okay. Okay, I so see, I need to hold down the A button and... Okay, I get it. I guess this is kind of physics based, but it's really fiddly. Um, I don't like this as much as the other one. The seesaw one. The controls are like really twitchy to get you into a certain position, and it's very hard to figure out where you're gonna hit. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this one either. Like, it, it is more physically than the previous one, so it's a bit better in that way, but it doesn't really bear much relation to the normal motion of a ball. Like, the seesaw one, you're controlling like how the ball moves by bouncing around and stuff, and moving the ground, which is exactly how the normal game mode works. But this one, not so much. Hmm. Yeah. Also, it doesn't look very high res, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Dangerous route. That feels more like it might be related. That sounds like a normal game. Move the ball with the left stick, you can't jump. But otherwise I think it's the same basic idea. Ready? Let's see. Yeah, this looks very familiar to the... Simil sorry, similar to the basic game, not familiar to the basic game. Yeah, this looks like it's basically a top-down version of the base game, which is... Something that um, Kirby Air Ride did, and that game is amazing, so... Again, I get points for that. <laughs> A 
course, the best mode in Kirby Air Ride was City Trial, and I don't think this game has a City Trial mode, but otherwise, yeah. It's also very hard, and um, just like in the original, it resets, like in normal gameplay, it resets the original when you get right to the edge, so. Oh my goodness. Yeah, um, this is okay. It's like, not great gameplay wise, but it, it fits in terms of like being in this game, so I'll give it points for that. The physics are a little confusing though. I feel like it's accelerating without me intending it to in some cases and going in weird directions and stuff. Like, it looks like the little arrow seems to need to move around to go places. Ah! The physics are a bit weird, but at least it's based on physics instead of other stuff. Also, this character has exactly the same, like, voice clips as the first one by the sound of things, so... Are they the same person? Or are they just, like, related? Okay, there we go. Are there any checkpoints on this route? I'm guessing this yellow stuff is checkpoints, maybe? Or maybe, like, it will take me to the beginning of the yellow section instead of the red section or whatever. Hopefully. <laughs> oh no! It takes you all the way back. That's really annoying. Oh my goodness. I feel like it should probably checkpoint you at some point during this route. Also, how does the timer pausing stuff work? Like, when there's other players? Does it still pause? Or maybe it doesn't. Oh no, sad monkey. Okay, well, that's, um, dangerous route. What's next? Hurdle race. Uh, that sounds... Jump, run, pause menu. LR. Alright, well, we'll see, I guess. I guess having a speed-oriented game is fitting, so... Uh, oh, you have to sw toggle between the buttons to run. That's a little annoying. Um, yeah, this feels very Mario Party-esque, like the little gimmicky games in Mario Party. And yeah, you have to mash L and R, and you can't use um, ZL and ZR, which is annoying because they're much more comfortable to press, because they're the big triggery ones and they're the little bumpers or whatever. Hmm. Yeah, that's not great. I, I thought it'd be more like you actually just like tilt your track or whatever and then jump over the hurdles that way, but it's not. Uh, hammer throw. Swing the hammer around and throw it as far as you can. Alright, well... It's physics, that's something. Do I like spin the stick in a circle, or...? I'm guessing probably. Um... What? I'm tw I was trolling the stick and it wasn't doing anything. Do I have to like hold the A button? Yeah, I do. Um. Alright. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Hmm. Again, this, this doesn't feel like it fits in this game. Like, it's just... It's just a... I spin the stick around and let go of the A button thing, which, yeah, it's not great. Game set. I got 28.86 meters. Again with the meters, interesting. Like, you can't change that to feet or whatever as far as I know. Hovercraft race. Well, you're actually in a ball this time, so that's something. Let's have a look. <laughs> Um, okay, I can move... Oh, okay, using both of the sticks. Okay, it's, it's like, um, tank, so, tank controls? No, not, not really tank controls in, like, the Resident Evil sense, but tank controls in the left and right tread sense. But with hovercrafts. Interesting. Ready? Go! Okay, so you have these little thrusters. Um, I'm trying to get the flags or fly between the flags, I'm not really sure. Also, wow, that ice ice stuff is really, really slippery. Okay, so you want to get the flags. Oh my god. <laughs> Look how much, like, slip there is. It's ridiculous. Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. This is this is absurd. Like I guess it's physics based again, so it sorta of fits, but it also sorta of doesn't. Um Yeah, I don't think they really thought these games out too carefully. Some of them like match up with what the base game's about, a lot of them don't. I like the controls in this one, but the actual, like, amount of traction this hovercraft gets, which is, like, none whatsoever, is really bad. Also, it looks like there isn't a time limit, I just have to get everything to make it end, so this might take a while. <laughs> because I keep, uh, bouncing around into snowman and stuff. Uh, there we go. And I guess in multiplayer this would be a bit more interesting, but still, it, it doesn't really fit with how the base game works, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, one more. Oh, come on, seriously? Urgh, go back that way! One in fifty-four seconds, sixty-eight milliseconds, probably. Good for you, me. Actually, that might be centiseconds because there's two digits. I don't know. Okay, monkey snowboard. Let's see if this is good. Um. Okay, so I t increase speed, decrease speed, turn left, turn right, jump. All right. All right. I mean, it's again sort of physics oriented, so maybe it's similar to the base game, and you're also on like a track. So you have to get down as fast as possible, like in the base game. And there's bananas to collect, like in the base game, so... Hmm... Oh wow, they give you a massive speed boost. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this, one, this one's not bad. Like, it's not really that related to what it's about, but, you know, whatever. It's fun. Like, it's not, it's not a good snowboarding game, but it's an alright, you know, mini-game in this game. Hmm, doesn't quite have the same physics the normal game does either. That slope should have increased my speed by quite a bit, and it, it didn't. It looks like you have to grab bananas to increase your speed instead, which is kind of silly. It's a bit like Mario Kart's coins that just don't really make any sense. But, I guess it's okay, it's just sort of arcadey, and this game is a bit arcadey, so it kind of makes sense. Did I just die? Oh my god. <laughs> you can die. <laughs> Not for long, but you can die. <laughs> yeah. It's not, like, as, like, logically physics-oriented as the base game again. And you're not in a ball, you're just on a snowboard. But, it's alright, it's not bad. Oh, oh, I thought I could probably jump over the snowman to get that, but apparently not. Can't get quite enough height. Anyway, I'm, like, way ahead anyway, so I am gonna win this race, but whatever. <laughs> um... Yeah, this one's okay. It's a little boring, honestly. Maybe with more players it'd be more fun, but... It's alright, it's not bad. Uh, monkey target. Control the ball so it lands in the center of the target. I think you're in the ball, so this might... Oh, hang on. Open ball, close ball? Okay, um, we'll see, we'll see how much this connects with the actual game. Um, okay, the ball's in a cannon. All right, so I, oh, it fires by itself. Oh, oh, I see. Um, oh, okay, you can open the ball once. Okay, so you open the ball and it works like a little hang glider or whatever. This is kind of hilarious. <laughs> I'm 
kind of wish you could do this in the base game because it's really funny. <laughs> Oh no, rolling, don't do that. Final round. This isn't a bad idea, actually. I, I like this one. It doesn't quite play like the base game again, but it's not really supposed to, and it, it works. It works okay. Although, as with any any game that uses these kind of controls, it is a bit annoying. Something I would roll further than that. Oh, she's happy. Well, they're happy. I assume it's she, but I don't know. <sighs> oh, Winrar is you. Yeah, that one's okay. Whack-a-mole. I mean, whack -mole's boring, so that's not a good start, but we'll, we'll see if they make a, maybe put a twist on it or something. Well, I have a little mallet. Okay, it's just whack a -mole. And the cursor doesn't even, like, snap on very well. It's very fiddly. Yeah, this is not great. Doesn't even have much to do with the monkeys, honestly. Like, I know the monkey's holding the mallet, but you don't even see them while this is happening. It might be better in multiplayer, where you're trying to compete with other players to get all the monkeys, all the, all the moles with, with your monkeys. Um, but in single player, it's, it's not great. Of course, these are party games. They're designed to play in multiplayer, so I guess it'd be better if I did what it's supposed to do. It's okay, I guess. It's not great. Yeah, that's not, that one's not great. That's very, very like mediocre Mario Party title sort of, sort of mini game. Um, I still think this is the best one because it plays like the normal game to an extent, followed by probably this one, which is really hard, but it's good. Um. What else was good? The snowball one's okay, but not really related. Target one is real good. Uh, so like maybe like half of them are okay. <laughs> yeah, that's something I guess. Um, time attack. I think that just means playing the regular levels online to see who can play fastest or whatever. The castle and highest overall score in all ten party games. That's the same game. So I think I've seen pretty much all this has to offer. Besides some unlockables that I know you can get for beating the whole game, but that's not going to happen in this video. So I think that's about all I'm doing for now. Um, so thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Um, that was Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. It, it's, it looks like a good game, but I'm a little disappointed that they didn't do that much to upgrade it for the masses. For the, for the, not the masses, the, you know, the new, new age of consoles or whatever. Um... Because, like, having, like, optional gyro controls in this particular game seems to fit really well. And the live system seems very dated. And uh, I feel like they could have messed with the party games a bit and made them a bit more Super Monkey Ball-y, perhaps. And maybe make the main game have, like, a... Like, a, I don't know, like a simultaneous race mode or something? Just, like, split the screen have each player on their own version of the board so they don't like mess each other up but whoever gets the goal first wins that kind of thing that would have been pretty easy um doing it online <clears throat> doing it online would be cool too but doing it like offline as a split screen would be very easy to do and would be really cool um but yeah the base game is solid so i'm glad i picked it up and i'm glad i came with that cool little sticker set um because that's a nice bonus that most switch games don't have most i think physical games these days just don't do that at all some of them don't even have a physical game in it, it's just like a download code you put into your Steam or whatever, which is obnoxious, but what can you do? Uh, not much. Anyway, uh, that's Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah. Bye!